I don't know if there's any French word for makers because that's the next uh, track we'll have now. Uh, uh, it's an entire curation on, on makers. It's interesting, as, as I was saying earlier, we we're going to a, a period of a very horizontal uh, power, distribution of power. So not only on software, but hardware has actually, the, the, the deflation, the price of hardware has fallen a lot, which means that now anyone can actually deal and create stuff directly, create, build, build products with hardware. We can actually go to uh, the uh, pop-up lab, which is in the main stage, to see some of the stuff that's been created here in France. But to talk about this, I would like now to welcome Braddy Forrest. Braddy? Hey! Hey, how are you? Good, man. How are you yeah. doing? You look so much better than I do. Wow. Uh, I don't know. I can't match your classic style. <laughs> I, I'm just kind of all over the map, as and they dude's say. And shoes. I mean, take a look at dude's shoes, guys. <laughs> hey, it's great to be back here at LeWeb. Thank you for having me. It's been just over a year since I launched Highway 1. We've had 35 companies graduate, and I've learned a lot about the world of hardware and manufacturing. So over this next hour, we're going to talk to a bunch of people who are also deep in the trenches and learn from them. First off, I'd like to invite out general partner of Hackcelerator, Benjamin Joffe. Good morning, everyone. Pleasure to be here. Uh, it's actually, I was hearing the talk uh, from the minister earlier. It was really interesting. He made reference to China because that's where I live. I, I live in Shenzhen uh, for the past, uh, for the past uh, year, and uh, I've been living in China for about six years and in Asia for about 10. And I'm going to tell you about hardware and uh, in particular about, uh, oh yeah, there we go. Uh, sorry. Uh, how we can make hardware, uh, how it's turned harder better, faster, and stronger now. So quickly about me, my name is Benjamin Joff. I'm a general partner at Hackcelerator. Uh, Hackcelerator is a, an accelerator focused on hardware. Uh, so far, we invested in about 50 startups. Uh, we have founders from all over the world, uh, about half from the US, including places like uh, Stanford, MIT, Berkeley. Uh, we have ex-Apple also joining us. Uh, the founders pool is actually pretty diverse, male, female, in the 20s to 40s. And we see ourselves a bit like a, a hardware academy that tries to create a methodology to create hardware startups in a lean way. So we invest amounts uh, uh, between $25,000 and $100,000, and we take the teams from wherever they are to Shenzhen so that they can build things. Uh, so those are the startups we invested in so far, uh, ranging from uh, home automation, sports, music, education, entertainment, even pet technology. Uh, we're also the largest investor in crowdfunded hardware. Those are all the startups that went through a program that crowdfunded, mostly on Kickstarter. So it's about 25 projects so far. So let's start with the first trend. So uh, hardware is getting harder. So I know. Everyone around here probably heard about the maker movement. And maker movement is really creating a grassroots creation um, of new products. But going from dreamer who just has ideas to a maker who starts to build prototypes to a veteran maker who can actually make a real product, finalize a product, it's really hard actually to go to the next steps, which is being an indie maker, uh, making at least up to a 1,000 products, or a startup that wants to ship uh, tens or hundreds or millions of products. So the maker skills today cover the range of mechanical, electronics, software, and design. But to go beyond that, the hardware 2.0 skills, you need to connect things. You need sensors. You need artificial intelligence, augmented reality, virtual reality, and data science increasingly. And now if you, if you have those skills, you can create products like this one. You might have already seen. The clear smart trash can, that's a typical like veteran maker product. You can create this, and to do this, you need actually a motion, you need a motion capture, you need uh, sensors, you need motors. So it's not trivial, but to make it a commercial product, you need much more skills. So you need skills in strategy, you need skills in production, in marketing, in finance, you need to understand how to build a community. 
If you break it down further, you need all those skills from positioning to sourcing, managing supply chain, understanding advertising, PR. There's a lot of things to learn. And for makers, well, generally starting with technical skills, it's really a lot of work. So the second trend is that things are getting better also in terms of the type of projects we see. Um, so every year we receive thousands of applications and that give us an idea of the near future, like what people are thinking about, what they want to make and what might be on the market in maybe one or two years. And we see better and better things. People targeting very specific problems, not just coming up with some cool thing or just a technology with no market in mind. They're really targeting pro like very clear solutions to very clear problems. And that leads me to actually uh, the lean hardware rule number one, which is really building the right thing. You don't want to build something that no one will use. That's such a waste, such a waste of effort. What's interesting is to see also an evolution of from the vision, the old vision of the future with like humanoid robots, jetpacks, flying cars, and hoverboards. This is kind of the old vision of the future. Those are really interesting and inspiring, but it's very far away in the future in terms of mass market. Those will look more mundane, but they're actually happening. Those are actually innovation that is happening today. So everyone's seen a Roomba and the cats love of them. But we see also autonomous lawnmowers that don't all fly. We see surgery robots. This is the Da Vinci robot, the most popular robot for surgery. The most used robot is actually probably elevators. Those have artificial intelligence. They can be coordinated. They evaluate how many people are in there. It's actually a really intelligent robot. And things like smart thermostats. So this one was put together using a, basically a maker tools, uh, and they build it over a weekend. Beyond that, you see other projects such as like drones. Some are toys, but some are getting increasingly specialized. Uh, so I've seen drones. Uh, that are just specialized on monitoring construction sites, for instance. You see technologies for pets, not always making the pet very happy. And you see robots used in, uh, like such as this one, so pilot in a hotel in the, in the United States. It's a, basically a robot that is doing butler service in a hotel. And well, sometimes the robots also play a little bit. So uh, to give you an example from actually our startups, uh, this is a robot uh, that's going to be used by biotech labs to replace all the hand pipetting that uh, lab techs have to do all day. This is a huge time saver. Um, that's actually a robot that's going to help uh, accelerate uh, discoveries and uh, experiments in uh, the biotech world. This is another product from Accelerator you might be familiar with because it's actually the first French startup we had go through the program. It's a device that actually turns your smartphone into a Polaroid. But beyond that, it also adds a little twist with augmented reality straight inside the picture. The startup is called Print. They're going to kickstart in, uh, in January, and uh, hopefully you'll have it for Christmas last, next year. The third trend is things are getting also a lot faster. Um, it's faster to prototype with platforms like Arduino, platforms like Raspberry Pi, connectivity modules like Spark, you have cloud infrastructure, you have smartphones, you have 3D printing. There's no excuse not to have a prototype today. What's hard is going beyond the first prototype and iterate fast with your own custom circuit and then being able to bring it to manufacturing. And there's a huge advantage in working directly with manufacturers because you can actually learn from them. They, ha they have an incredible amount of know-how that you can leverage to make better products. Hence the lean hardware rule number two, which is build things right. Build with the right components, with the right partners, so that you can anticipate the life cycle of your product, and so that you can optimize your supply chain to make things fast and better. Some quotes of why we're in Shenzhen. So this is a team that's building an, a printer for circuit boards. And basically saying that Shenzhen's electronics market, which is a huge block of 12 buildings, 20 buildings, full of electronics. It's a maker's dream. And just being there allows you to prototype a lot faster. Every week over there is worth a month, uh, according to this startup that was based in, the, in San Francisco uh, before joining us. 
So somehow our view is that all hardware lead to Shenzhen, and maybe on the panel we'll discuss that later, how uh, startups are increasingly connected with this amazing ecosystem. So the last trend is that startups are also getting stronger in that sense that it's a global movement, there's more and more startups, there's more and more funding, there's more and more exits. And also there's a lot of learning from the software world going from, maybe you're familiar with the lean software cycle of lean, uh, build, measure, learn. In hardware, there's some of that, but in addition, you have to fund. You have to reach milestones, you have to fund toward the next milestone and learn how to learn the skills you need to get there. So I listed quickly some of the typical milestones of hardware. Uh, first is when you validate a market with customer discovery. Then you have a work-like prototype that more or less does the job. Then the look-like prototype that's uh, basically close to the final form factor. Then crowdfunding can also be a key milestone for hardware. And last, when you ship, then the real world actually kicks in. People leave reviews. On, if you have a lot of stars on, a, on your Amazon review, then you, you're, you're golden. Another key trend is that crowdfunding uh, is, could also be considered as a new seed. Um, this is a startup that uh, went through our program and went straight from a very successful Kickstarter, of about half a million dollars, to a Series A of five million dollars about a year later. The third rule is ship fast but scale slow. Uh, scaling too fast is one of the key reasons uh, for startup to die, in particular for hardware where cash flow is so important. So just to recap and uh, conclude, so the key death traps to avoid is poor positioning, make sure you build something people want, learn fast because there's so many skills you need to pick up, don't crowdfund too prematurely un until you know how you're gonna make the product. The next is be hands-on for manufacturing, be in the factory, be on the factory floor, you need to know how the tools work, you need to talk to the engineers and avoid premature scaling. And eventually, if you dodge death, you win. Thank you very much. Cheers.